Hello, everybody. We are rocking. Sorry, I got a little excited there. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that she's excited. And this is going to be a little bit different than the stream that you may have seen earlier today. I know, Opti, you were here. Um, and hello. How are you, Opti? Um, so we're, uh, we have a special guest tonight uh, who is on the line. And she is a astrophysicist that extraordinaire that I caught one day on Twitch um, rocking some astrophysics and some Python and some Pikachu's I think that night but it was uh, kind of a, kind of an interesting night that I walked into but uh, and I was I was in a troll mood but uh, she said hey you know I'd I'd like to learn some C I've been doing enough of this Python and I said hey let's learn some C. <laughs> let's get going. So uh, she's she's coming from a programming uh, background, mostly in Python for data stuff. And we're going to start a new series in uh, also in the Monday Learn sessions for C programmers that are learning C as an additional language. And with that said, I'd like to introduce you all and reintroduce you for those who already know her to Jess, the Enceladosaurus, Enceladosaurus, <laughs> which I'm totally going to get right someday, the Enceladosaurus. So hello, Jess. Are you there? Yep. Hey, everyone. Uh, all right. Sweet. Um, we are totally going with uh, one video camera tonight due to I'm having enough technical issues over here, but we are going to... Uh, maybe add video later for her as well. So I don't know if you all saw the screen earlier um, with the uh, with the intro, but I was very proud that I rolled both of these 19s uh, while we were just setting the stream up. Yeah, I feel very good about those 19s. I think that, that Jess is just good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, take it. <laughs> that's that's a hell of a roll. So uh, that's great. We're going to be using uh, the same tool that we were using before, where I have this. So this is um, this is the same tool that you saw earlier today that was uh, running with TN for the Python from scratch course. But we're done with Python. We are moving out of interpreted languages. We are compiling things. We are going to start in C. And in C, you don't get anything for free, literally. Like everything that you want to do on the computer, you know what you're paying for on every line. Like it, it's it's designed, this is like a very old language at this point uh, compared to a bunch of the other stuff. It does none of the memory management for you. And it is your responsibility. Everything becomes your responsibility. I told Jess, I don't know why you want to learn this, but you know, <laughs> I, oh boy. I am not my sister's keeper, so <laughs> she wants to learn it. She gets to learn it. <laughs> All right. So, Jess, have you ever written any C before? So I have, I, I guess I think the, the Arduino programming language might be similar. Yeah, that's is very C-like, yes. But... Yeah, so I think that's the closest I've come. But proper C, absolutely no. Proper C. <laughs> I don't even know if there is a proper C. <laughs> Let's just say C, lots of C. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, to uh, just because uh, Opti's here and Opti knows the sort of issues I have with the whiteboard, I am going to use the whiteboard because I, I went and crammed code up this feature and uh, to get this whiteboard on the screen. And then the first session that it was available, I didn't use it at all. What? <laughs> so, Your whiteboard is, is really cool. Whiteboard is really whiteboard is cool. <laughs> right, right. it's a black blackboard you know that you know it's ever. funny that you say that because it is black <laughs> but it's not it's really white okay so the reason i say it's a whiteboard and nightshade dude by the way who happens to be here hello nightshade dude is always upset every time i refer to this thing as a whiteboard but just it's it's an old thing for me it i even have whiteboard glove glove on um so I was we are, wondering, what is that? Is yeah, that so you don't smudge? That, or yeah, it's it's so, it? it's not really it's smudge and like so that your hand doesn't detect and like you get a big squash oh, writing okay. on there. And plus, it's like really hard to write if you like hold it like <laughs> like far enough away. Not I always put my hand on the paper. So, <laughs> um, so we have the glove and I call it a whiteboard mainly just because it's like it doesn't screech like chalk. <laughs> 
Oof, it's got goodness. a pen marker thing and you know we've got we, we we totally have like different colors that we can draw with and you know we 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 can we can just break out into trees and you know whatever <laughs> and, um and so that's not at all what we're going to be writing because we're we're serious c programmers and you know we're we're, <laughs> we're done with this sort of python world we've had enough of the computer memory managing memory for us so there there's no more of this memory management i want to do this memory management myself so i'm going to tell you i'm going to be explicit about everything that i allocate <laughs> and this is kind of a big deal because we know that yeah there are no more training wheels <laughs> you are <laughs> definitely done with that um oh and by the way chat are you getting her uh typing sounds is that coming through as well because i'm um, I'm definitely curious. Um, so we're going to be explicit. Hopefully it's not too loud. <laughs> uh, I Hopefully it is loud. You should let your keyboard scream. Be proud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, you know, just fill in details as we kind of go along. So we're going to declare things. So this, and by the way, I really shouldn't pick such a difficult to see color. <laughs> we're going to, because declaring is about declaring things. So we're going to, we're going to declare the things. And this is really important because in C, basically the idea is that you kind of get nothing for free. So um, unlike Python, which has like a global scope where you can just sort of like write code whenever you feel like it willy nilly, C requires that absolutely everything is in a function. And it, this dates back to the time when like, you know, there were language debates about whether something was a function if it didn't return a value because it came from math language, right? So to be a function, you have to return something. Like you can't be like f of x, nothing. I mean, <laughs> even that is returning something. So that, that, that was kind of a problem. And so of course, C sort of standardized that as the null, which, you know, you're gonna get some issues with later uh, oh because most constants get written in C as capital, just like in Python. So null is definitely null. And um, this, uh, so we do need to define everything that's in a function. So what do you do if something's not in a function? Well, you start with main. <laughs> main is your starting place. So the, the linker is going to go looking for main as the first place to invoke your program. And it's going to have a few scary things because in Python, you would have defined it something like this, right? Yeah. All right. So that's cool because, you know, you can return something or you could just not return anything, right? You could just pass on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that's, that's a very like Pythonic way of doing things. And we're not, we're not doing Python in here. We're, 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 we're doing C and that means that we have to say exactly what we're paying for at every moment. So if we're going to define a function as main, we need to specify on the left what it returns. Every function must return something. And on the right, and by the way, I'm teaching you <laughs> proper C, <laughs> as it were. There, I thought there was no proper there, C. <laughs> there, let's, let's say like as proper as we can get. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're not having any of these functions that don't return things. Okay, that's 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 old C. We don't we don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, um, got it. it we're, we're using the something a little bit after the C eighty nine standard. So, um, we'll don't don't worry about that too much. But we're gonna we're gonna set the compiler to be like really complain mode. It has pedantic mode. Okay, so um, so we need to specify a return value. And we need to specify, actually, hold on, let me, <laughs> we're, we're already getting a little bit crazy here. So in order to have a function, so we have, we have whatever the function name is, right? And, you know, I'm just going to blow this up for the people. Uh, not there. Oh, of course, I threw away my whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so... We're going to, and just because things are going to be sort of hard for Jesse to read, I'm going to try to write a little bit bigger. So um, we start off with our function name, and that's great. So we're defining this thing. And then we have to specify over here a return type, 
Now this is Python. This is not Python. So you actually have to say what type everything is. You can't be changing it like middle of the program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, this deserves a monocle, by the way. I just saw that. <laughs> um, so right, it's not dynamically typed, right? It is not dynamically typed or duct typed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally lost it. But I had a single use monocle here and I feel really bad. <laughs> that I don't have it here because it is just a fantastic thing. <laughs> okay, <is> so awesome. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we have this name, and then what we do is we have just like in um, Python, we specify this, you know, the parameter list mm -hmm. um, or the argument list, as it's called in C. And I don't really know why that started, but <laughs> anyway, they call it arguments. I'll call them params a lot, but you know, same idea. Um, okay. And again, everything that is there really needs a, you know, it needs a name and it needs a type. Okay. So Python, we can just sort of like sit there and be like, yeah, okay, we're going to have X and we're going to assign it like five. And then later on, we're sort of doing some magic. And then we're just like, okay, you know what? I, I like X to be a string and that's cool in Python, but that is totally not allowed in C. So, you know, if you, you choose, you make that choice, that's it. <laughs> so... <laughs> C sounds like kind of like 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 the old man who's like get off my lawn a little <laughs> yes. bit, you know? Like no, you can't. That's not how we do things. Well, like one of those things. It's like you're gonna realize is that Python comes quite a bit later. So they sort of said like, hey, well, what if you wanted to do that? And like C's like no, <laughs> like C's so, like been around forever. So, so with what you're saying here, like with the return type and everything, um, like I I totally don't know what I'm doing. But, oh like, yeah, this kind of be like you could kind of go like. Oh, I don't man. know if you oh, need you're... colon after or what, but like, is that kind of you, like yeah. I'm specifying that it would return an integer? Yep. Let me uh, let and... me get to that <laughs> before we okay. hit the code. <laughs> um, I just like like, like emulating because sometimes that helps. Uh, it for oh me. yeah, sure. I mean, well, the problem is that we don't. All right, yeah, we do need to start with what those types are. Um, but the thing is, let me let me just say real fast that basically, so we have our argument list and we have our return, and we have to make sure. Oh, and we get extra lines too. And we have our return and we have to make sure that everything needs a type and a name. And the only exception to that is in the return type, which doesn't, it's just a type. So when you're mm -hmm. specifying a function, think like, cause they're, they're coming from the world of math. You're saying like, okay, this is my parameter. This is my function name. And this is going to be my return type. You know, so, you know, it, in math, it's always a number, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? But in C, it could be whatever. So we'll start with your your type that you just kind of got going with, which is going to be kind of important <laughs> because happens to be what main needs. Um, so we have ints, we have cares, um, and we're going to do... I. I Let's not do too much more than that. We're going we're gonna to add on like some decorators to that in a little bit. But um, so starting there, we need to have the standard invocation for main, which is formulaic. And this you just have to memorize because don't write it any other way ever. All right. And this is just going to be in is the return type on main. And this thing takes two parameters. It takes an arg C and it takes an arg V. I'm not talking about Windows here. We're talking about POSIX, standard C. <laughs> That's a bad P. <laughs> OK, so this is like kind of like the, uni the Unix world. you know. And then, by the way, just convention. Oh, by the way, you always need braces. So any place where a brace is optional, I don't want to see optional braces. I always want to see braces. <laughs> so, okay. uh, and that is basically our invocation. So what are we invoking? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the definition of the thing we're going to invoke. So the system always gets you started by calling your main routine. And it always calls it with this specification. OK. So let me cut over to uh, our learning screen. OK. So yeah, just to get you started, this kind of looks sort of like this. Okay, that's okay. it in cleaned up non-guy handwriting. <laughs> so, so that has to be at the start of everything. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? okay? It, it usually it's funny that you say the start because it's usually at the bottom of wherever the main 
routine is. <laughs> but so is this so so let's say that you have um like a couple of a couple of scripts that you've written and and then some are never going to be run like they're never going to be they don't run. have a main yes so do exactly. you, this is this is just like the the thing that you do at python which is like if something equals yeah. main do this other yeah okay i know what you're, yeah thank you the name thing yep. yeah that okay so yep, yep. it is like that in that it's required that's that's where your program will start um python mm -hmm. overloads it because it says like okay like if this thing's here like run the program if you're running it then run then run this routine and mm -hmm. if you're importing it don't run with this routine okay c doesn't have any of that c is okay. just like it sees main it's calling main you don't have main it throws an error <laughs> i see okay so this gotcha. is like you know this is your formulaic invocation to the compiler saying i am ready to run write c <laughs> so okay. okay um now, just a few like quick things we're going to need like to get going is this is a C++ style comment, which is totally allowed. And it just means like, like this line is out. Yeah, yeah. Just like hashtags in Python. OK. And this is your multi-line comment. So I can cool. do that and say, hey, more comment stuff. Yep. OK. And in there, there's this will not be run. Um, there's already a bug in this program, which is that, and this is why I always write this first. We said that this thing returns an integer. Okay. And I always forget, by the way, that you can't see the selections. I'm selecting it, but um, line four, <laughs> I need I need to add that feature. <laughs> so I can see on the I've got the the stream up, so I can oh, see okay, what you're cool. selecting. Yep. Um, yeah, basically that return type says that we have to return something. Um, so make sure that you return something. Don't get in the okay. habit of like main actually is like allowed to slide because willy-nilly rules. <laughs> so main is a special function. So if you don't return, then it just returns zero. And, but okay. um, we want to just, just get in the habit of like always having that. So right here, this is your minimal C program that you're always going to write like every time you want to write a C program. Doesn't that just though, so if, if you're defining this function main mm -hmm. and that's telling, you know, I guess your compiler or whatever that, mm -hmm you are writing you're writing c i mean isn't it just going to tell this program then to return zero regardless of what you write that's correct it's always going to run that um now why do we want to return zero that actually gets into an operating system thing this return type which is coming back from main mm -hmm. is the exit code of your program and that's a very unixy kind of thing which by the way every other operating system stole it so <laughs> <laughs> um, but this 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 int that we're returning on main that actually is your exit code, and that basically is okay. you telling the operating system, like, this is how I ended up. And basically, it can either be zero, which means everything is fine, everything's fine here, okay. just move along, <laughs> or that could be a number, and any number it is that's not zero means that it was an error, and like somehow your program died. <laughs> okay. So that's your way of telling the operating system kind of what's going on with status. Now, some programs are non-standard and they don't, you know, follow the convention, but most of those programs are gone from Unix lore. <laughs> so um, just zero means everything's fine. And if you wanted to exit like early, like say like if something bad happened, then, which we always do braces, then we would, we could say like return negative one. Okay, so there's kind of like a standard. Mm, like, okay. That means something bad happened. There's actually definitions for what these things are, um, but we're not going to worry about that. That's totally advanced, and we're not. We're, we'll get there later. <laughs> okay. Uh, for now, just throw anything you want. I mean, I have a habit of always returning two or three because mm -hmm. I never want to see that. I don't know. I, I had a thing about twos and threes when I learned how to program C. <laughs> so. Is this just good, like, like you know, error handling or ways to kind of... Oh, that's not handling. There's no handling. Or... Everything's... You have, you pay for everything in C. It doesn't handle anything. Like, if something goes wrong, it'll just crash all over the place. So this helps you know... <laughs> yeah, this why. gives you a hint. Like, okay... Oh, God. Okay. That program didn't return anything. What am I getting myself into? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be hard coming from a Python mindset where Python does everything. I mean, you know, Python has import anti-gravity, right? <laughs> so okay <laughs> which is awesome by the way <laughs> that that works i don't know if you've tried that in python <laughs> i tried what 
there there really is import anti gravity. Really? Yeah, that I'm, I'm not okay. even kidding. <laughs> that's that's a real thing. Um, okay. Uh, it's a Randall Monroe joke. If you've ever done XKCD Fine. stuff, but. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is just standard call signature. Um, and by the way, thank you people for the follows. I'm sort of like half out of it on chat. We're just getting oriented here, but uh, Goku and Loafbone, thank you. Um, okay, so yes, there is a board. Uh, Korean American Barbecue, you are jumping ahead. <laughs> so um, Delta T, this program is our bare minimum C program. This is just getting started with our standard call signature. This is uh, the first time running through C for uh, the Enceladosaurus. Yes. Yes, I totally yeah, said it you right. got it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, oh, oh, what is the tutoring program? This is uh, something that I wrote myself, um, basically kind of starting with Enceladosaurus because, you know, I was saying, hey, I'll teach you C. And then I was like, well, we need a tool to learn. <laughs> so, oh, my God. You built this that fast? Yeah. We yeah, had that actually, conversation like a week ago. I know. This, the, if you watch oh my, my next stream the day after we had that conversation, you would see me building this. <laughs> That's why there's a bunch of missing features. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Well, I made a plot. It took me two days. No. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's wow, me that's in JavaScript. So I mean, I start doing oh JavaScript gosh. and it's like days. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, I have not pushed it to GitHub, Korean American Barbecue. We're, did, okay, wait. Okay, just, just, just wait for it. Everyone sees this thing. They're like, hey, I want that. Thing. All right. Sorry. Because it's awesome. Getting it's incredible that you built this that fast. Getting wow. sidetracked. Getting sidetracked. You, you got to write C. So. Why don't you um, yes. run our first C program here? Okay. Hello, Akshay. How are you? And what do we get for output? I see nothing. Absolutely nothing because, and this is your first lesson in C. The return <laughs> code goes to the operating system, not to you. I see. Okay. <laughs> so, That's great. All right. So That's zero cool. is going to the operating system. The operating system is like, yeah, that's fine. I got it. Nothing went wrong with that program. And you will not know that, which is very annoying. So okay, the so return... stupid question. Yep. Stupid question. How does it know that zero is is okay? Like, oh. why does it think that that's, that's the acceptable, like, that's yes, everything's great? That's an old Kernigan thing. So Kernigan and Richie, like, so like way back, what, what, what I'm referring to very briefly is what we're going to call K and R. Um, mm -hmm. Kernigan and Richie are sort of like the language creators for C. And yes, there was an A, there was a B, and they had problems. <laughs> so C made it. <laughs> and, okay. and, and Kernigan being the sly dog he was, um, you know, was building the Unix operating system, which was another spoof on, you know, because it's Unix, right? Which was a play on Unix. <laughs> which was a play on Multix, which was the operating system of the time because it could run multiple programs at the same time. And so this was the the one program at a time, the Unix. <laughs> so oh anyway, he if you get to invent the language, you get to choose the convention. So back then it was a lot okay, easier. It's to, convention. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, you can throw something different back to the operating system and the operating system just won't care. <laughs> I mean, it's just um, if you looked in my in the messages file of the of the server that's hosting this right now, you would see that it'd be like, "Ooh, something might have gone wrong because the program didn't return zero. And that's all it does. OK, <laughs> so wow. Well, uh, not very useful. It is useful in shell scripts. But to us today, it's really useless. So let's not count on the return code other than zero if it's fine and not zero yep. if it's not fine. <laughs> OK. Okay, and that's a little bit weird, and that's important because a bunch of the libraries that we're going to use follow the same convention. You would think, because if you chose zero, you'd be like, oh, yeah, zero is fine. So then I say, if zero, going to do the branch or not? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> this is a little confusing, but well, <laughs> anyway. Um, basically, there's all sorts of things in the standard libraries that return zero when they work. Okay. <laughs> And the problem is this would cast to false if there was false in the language. But um, so this is, it's horribly inconsistent. <laughs> so we're not going to worry about that, though. What we are going to worry about is how do you get some output to start showing up? OK. So you might have heard of this function before. Yeah, yeah. OK, so I've used that with Arduino. OK, cool. Um, yeah. I think they have a print version of it instead of printf. Do they? I'm not no. sure. The I, print the print F looks familiar at least, so maybe that's just okay. Good. Looking at something else. But uh, yeah, okay. But you don't get anything free because C and not Arduino, so you actually have to say where that comes from. So oh my God. 
we have to say like that's I want standard input and output. So include standard input and output. And then I get printf. Okay. So if you forget to write, this is almost always going to be at the start of every program you write. If you forget to include it and you're like, why is this not working? <laughs> what just... is the pound sign oh, in C? Yeah, that's a preprocessor directive. So C back in the day sort of predates being able to, like, Python is, like, so radically different because it's so far in the future, like, compared mm -hmm. to C. It's, like, 30, 40 years later. So <laughs> at that point, they were, like, there was a notion of files on the file system that you could load. C didn't yes. have that. <laughs> C didn't come. Oh. C predates I.O., <laughs> basically. So, I mean, it's, like, right there at the start of the operating system. So, like... Nothing is included, like I said. You have to know what you're paying for. So in this case, this is a preprocessor directive, which is saying, before you compile this program, I want you to go find this thing, stdio.h, and these angle brackets, oops, these angle brackets, uh, the, the less sign and the greater than, um, they say that it's in the standard system path, and this says, I want you to go include that right here as if you copy and pasted it. Okay. So there's none of this runtime stuff. Like like in Python, you can kind of do something like this and be like, you know, oh, import the thing. Yeah. You know, and it'll only conditionally import this thing. Like it'll it'll be like, oh yeah, well, if she runs main, then I'll go import the thing. Mm -hmm. There's no notion of that in C. <laughs> so um, C says, if you include it, like... I will just paste it right there before I compile it because there is nothing that pretty much happens at runtime. So okay. there's a whole bunch of these that we're going to end up using. Like we can do, you know, these these ones with the angle brackets are sort of standard. Like, you know, there's standard def and standard library and, you know, I, there's types and there's time and there's, you know, all sorts of things. But we're going to get to those a little bit later. Um, for now, this one we're just going to kind of one off and it includes our most important function which is printf so that has the function signature for for printf and oh signature just means the declaration line like you know this main line i'm highlighting mm -hmm. okay so and so you so because yeah. this is mm, because all right so the way i'm thinking of include which might you know not be right but it, it is a little bit like the import statements, except you said like it's telling it to basically copy and paste the code from that particular exactly. file. And is that why you don't have to like say studio dot or, you know, whatever dot H dot print TF because, oh, you know, you're not, you're that's not, you don't have to spaces. reference. Yeah. You don't have to reference it because it's actually saying include the content of this. You don't yes. have to do that, right? This because we don't it's saying, do. <laughs> because yeah. it's including it. It's not importing it. For exactly the reason you said. Okay. There is no notion. That's why import. They actually. That's why they changed the word, because <laughs> they wanted to say like this is not your C notion of an include. Because an include literally means take this file and copy it right here. Oh wow. Okay. Like, do you that, have imports as well in C? There is something similar. There's dynamic libraries that you can load, but that's definitely beyond this course. <laughs> okay, yeah, no worries. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a DL open. There's, um, there, there's, there's a bunch of stuff. So like you can programmatically say, pull this thing in. But I can tell you that that came like 10 years later. <laughs> so they, they, you, you got to keep in mind, when they were writing C, like punch cards were still a thing. Oh my gosh, okay. I, I finally figured out why all my computer science professors were so obsessed with sorting algorithms because you drop a stack of punch cards and you know, there goes your afternoon. Like, I, I, I'm positive that's the reason they're so obsessed with with sorting algorithms. But I'm glad there's a reason in there somewhere other than just torturing us. I'm, I'm coming up with it. I, I'm not sure it's the thing, but um, yes, yes, loaf bone. It was originally discovered in cave paintings, so it's dead. <laughs> it's it's that old. But you know, it's it's kind of beautiful in the fact that like it does nothing surprising. Like it it does literally whatever you tell it, and there's there's no magic hiding. <laughs> Okay, so to use printf, we basically just give it a string. Um, I'm starting a little bit higher level on this, but we, so um, strings work pretty much the same way that they do in Python. So I could say like, you know, this is some output. 
Um, mm -hmm. One thing you're probably not used to is C does nothing for you. So you have to say, I want a new line at the end of that. OK. Um, so that's a gotcha. But <laughs> um, so if we go and we execute this thing, we actually get the output. Cool. OK, great. So if I forget to put this new line here, I can run it. And that's fine until I run it another time. And <laughs> mm, I see what you're saying. All right. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So literally, you get nothing for free. <laughs> um, so, OK, cool. Um, this we're going to be using to dump stuff out. Uh, and it has a whole bunch of format specifiers, which you might have seen with um, Arduino. I'm not, I'm not sure if they're in there or not. Um, but let's start off with some variables. So like, let's, let's just do a little bit of basic math. So in Python, I would say something like, yeah, let x be 5, and mm -hmm. except, you know, by the way, you have to put a semicolon on the every, end of every line. <laughs> Okay. That was the statement terminator because C never knew when you were done, you know, because you could do this because it didn't fit on your punch card. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay. That's so, actually kind of cool. That's yeah. a cool reason for it. But is yeah. this where we go like var x? Oh, var. We don't get var. <laughs> no? Is that not what it is? Oh, that's sorry. That's our Arduino. Yeah. No, you, okay. you have to specify a type. It's not just a variable. <laughs> oh, poo. Yeah. Okay. If, if we run this thing, it's going to fail in the compile pass and we get no output. But... Um, if I actually had my error message showing up on console, it would say this for you. I see. OK, because we haven't declared it first. That right. makes sense. So to declare it, we have to specify its type. I wasn't kidding about types. So if we want this thing to be a number, we just call it mm -hmm. an int. OK. OK. Um, follow good practice for now. So like if you want to do multiple variables, put them on separate lines. This is actually valid. You can okay. do that, but that's that's naughty dev. So let, let's not do that. <laughs> let's try to write clean C for today. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So if we want to do a little bit of math, um, and let's uninitialize something. So we're just going to have Z, which is uninitialized. Now, keep in mind, in like Python, it sort of does default things, and it says that will be equal to zero. C does not do that. Right okay. now, Z is literally whatever that piece of memory had in it prior to allocation to you. So if okay. it said that if this if the runtime ends up going, this is the piece of memory you're getting, that will have whatever it had in it. Now, modern C, modern operating systems clear that memory because that was a great way to steal passwords <laughs> back in the day. Oh, okay, <laughs> yep, you never sense. really knew what you were getting when you got memory. So nowadays they actually do clear it, but like do not count on that behavior because <laughs> you never okay. know where this thing's going to be running. So if you want it to be initialized to zero, set it to zero. Okay. okay. So how my your basic arithmetic works kind of the way you would expect. So why don't you just take a guess? How do I get x times y in z? x times y and z? Oh, in z. Let's store the result in z. Oh, Lord. Um, well, so I've already declared it. Do I have to declare it twice? Nope. Already declared. OK. So in that case. I've even set the values for you. Yes. That's that's exactly it. So <laughs> your, your standard arithmetic Yay! works exactly the same way as Python. So. You don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, even function invocations kind of work the same way, like this this whole parenthesis, you know, to say, mm -hmm. like, this is a function I want you to call. OK, now we might be curious what the value of z is. In Python, we could just do something like this, right? Yes. Except that's no good in c. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> because, Why? because z is literally, unlike in Python, you see, what Python's doing is when you actually have that Z, you're actually casting it to a string, right? You're, you're saying like, okay, I want you to turn this thing into a string and then put that on the output. Oh. Wait, so because is that, why can't the output handle integers? Because the output doesn't handle anything but strings. Oh. Yeah, that okay. strings only. Did not know that. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense then. So you would have to kind of change its type first, but you can't change yeah, its type because that's you exactly said you true. can't change type. And how would so, we change its type? We'd have to write a program that reads the number and turns it into equivalent 
ASCII characters. Serious? Yes. Okay. See. Okay. <laughs> so. Sorry. Yeah, that that's um, that printf does that for you, but you basically that's what the F is. F stands for format. <laughs> I see. Okay, so, so that's like a nice little handy tool because then you don't yeah. have to deal with all of that. That's them. why we're starting a little bit high level. If we if we actually use like the low level stuff like put C, which puts a character on the output. If I try to put a character like 65, what do you think? Well, actually, let's put a number, sorry. Um, if I try to put the number 65 on output, what do you think you're going to see? Well, I'm guessing it's not going to work. Well, yeah, it's it's not happy because uh, put C requires two arguments, of course. <laughs> so, um, this, uh, you, you're not on a Unix system right now, right? I am not. Okay, so you actually don't have the man pages, but, um, oh, sorry, I actually want put care. I'm writing the, the short one here, but um, this this is actually the routine that I'm looking for. So if I go and I run this thing, I get an A. What? What? Yeah, I, I run it. I get an A. I put in a 66. I get a B. What? I put in. If I put in a 60. That's not even, like, like that's not, hold on. Um, if I put in a 70, I get an F. That makes, what? Hold on. Oh, one off. But that's not, that's not going, it's not mapping numbers just straight to letters. So what? Ah, that's the fun part. This number here is just the number 74. Right? Yes. It's literally yes. the number 74. So if I stick that into a memory location, like if I say there's a character, by the way, don't don't declare things down below. <laughs> Try to do your declarations up at the top of whatever your routine is. <laughs> um, so if I have a character which is just like some character, and mm -hmm. we're going to use C-style camel casing. So I don't want to see any of this camel casing nonsense. <laughs> okay. uh, snake casing, rather. Um, so we can actually just do uh, some character. And I can do something like, I want some character to be equal to um, 74. That okay. looks wrong, doesn't it? It does it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's just putting 74 into some character. But if I go and I actually dump this thing out on console, I get that J again. So, actually, what I'm actually hiding here is this is this is ASCII in a nutshell. So, um, okay, ASCII manual page. So, I'm gonna try to do this here so that we can see it on stream. But um, this is this would be what you got if you typed man ASCII. Then, uh, if you can see the stream, yep. This is uh, this is what you would see. You would see this sort of character table. And okay, yep. we're putting in numbers that are decimal because by default it's decimal unless you say it's not decimal. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so if we jump down here and we go looking for 74, whoops. Oh, of course, I'm looking at the wrong column. But if I go here and I find this decimal 74, I would see that this is really a J. Okay. So if I wanted to write out Jess, I could do... 74, 69, and 283s. Okay. So you said it doesn't like, it doesn't give you anything. It doesn't give you anything for free, but it's giving me ASCII conversion for free. Uh, I'm telling not. it, I'm telling it print a number and it's like, I'm going to convert this to, that's, I mean. <sighs> that's actually in that function. So that okay, you're not getting that for free. Um, so if I go and I execute this, then I can spell because some care actually has a 74 in it. So I get Jess. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I get Jess the hard way, right? You know, I actually had yeah, to spell right. out every one of those ASCII characters. So um, that's kind of Is annoying. Is it because you're, you you called it a character though? So it up there when you declared it, you told you told I don't know. You told the program that it's that it's a character. Does that oh, mean that it's that's not a problem? Don't worry about that. I can actually call some character. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just change it to an int? Except put care takes a character. So I see. 
if okay. we run this, we're going to get a we're going to get a compiler warning which says, by the way, you're using the wrong type. So I'm just going to cast it for you. <laughs> And it still works. So we actually still get Jess here in the output. But if we go and we like, I mean, so it doesn't really seem to matter because that 74, if it's a character or if it's a character, if it's an integer or a character, some care as care, and I make mm -hmm. that a 74, I can, I can do this just as well. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so... This is like kind of the first bad part of going into C. Like when you get casts, when, when, when you're sort of taking a type and making it another type in Python, you're actually getting a lot of magic happening kind of hidden from you. But this literally puts 74 into memory. So like this memory location, which has some care as care, has the number 74 in it. And if I put it out, it doesn't matter if the type is a care or an int. It's going to treat it as if it's ASCII. Huh. So if I type something like this, if I say like J as a character, then mm -hmm. it's this is going to work. And if I ask for the character that's after that, which should be K, well, let's say some care is some care as care plus one, then Kess. <laughs> okay. But we don't want to turn you into Kess because... <laughs> Bad Star Trek. I'm clearing my output. Sorry. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> should, should have thought I... that out. <laughs> Kess. Poor Kess. Poor Kess. <laughs> Poor Kess. Um, I actually, I, I really like Voyager, by the way. But um, Me too. My computer's named Janeway, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Um, so, by the way, in C, this is quite important. Like, Single quotes and double quotes, you'll see why I write double quotes every time I write Python, but they're not the same in when, when, you're, when you're operating in C. So okay. it, single quotes means that this is just a character. So it's for exactly the kind of line that we just wrote. Like if you have, a, if you have your variable declared as a care, then you use single quotes if you want to use a letter. Otherwise, you can use a number. And that's fine because you can go look up in your ASCII man page what the right letter it, what the right code is for each letter. That's a lot of work. <laughs> so we could just outsource that to the compiler and say, here, you go figure that out, okay? <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to get rid of line 11 here. So if we go and we run that, that's fine. But if I go and I change this and say this thing is like really double quotes. What? 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 I have no idea what's going on. No. It doesn't make any sense, right? That's because we're used to things like Python, where Python's like, hey, you got double quotes, you got single quotes, whatever. You mean letters, right? What are double quotes for C? What are double quotes? Double quotes are actually for strings. So we actually used one before when we said printf, this yeah. is stuff. This is a string, right? And by the string, it literally comes from string of characters. Like mm -hmm. if you took a bunch of characters and strung them together <laughs> with a piece of thread, that is literally what that came from. <laughs> so, okay. so that's a string, but that's different from a character because a character is only one of those. Mm -hmm. that, Including spaces though, right? So you could do a space yeah. there. Yeah, I yeah. could do a space, but I couldn't do a space and a Z because that's two characters. That's two characters, right? I so it's okay. this is kind of like the first hard shift for C is that like every memory address has literally whatever you put in it. <laughs> so All right, does that make okay. sense? Yeah, I know that does. That makes perfect sense. Mm. I still don't know why it's a D, but yeah. Well, let's get to that because that funny you <laughs> should ask. <laughs> because let's say that we had a buffer. And what if oh, I Okay. Well, yep. it doesn't need to be a buffer. Why, why don't you, why don't you name the variable? I'm typing too much. No, go for it. It's called buffer. Uh, buffer. Okay. Yeah. So let's say that we had this thing and it was called a buffer, mm -hmm. and we wanted to put the characters for Jess in it. Okay. So, how much space do I need to store the word Jess? Um, four characters yeah. worth. Four characters <laughs> worth of space. So, and we're gonna upgrade ourselves into the future and we're going to add lowercase characters 
<laughs> which came after C, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, um, all right. So we go here and we think, all right, great. Well, we'll just assign it to Jess. So we need four characters, right? Well, turns mm -hmm. out arrays, you're familiar with arrays in Python. Yeah, yeah. So I can allocate four characters and I could say buffer. Now, this is why I wanted to call this thing buff, but I'm just going to call it B because I don't want to type a lot. So B sub zero is going to be J. B sub one is going to be E. B sub two <laughs> it's going to be okay. S. See in the now you've here. lost me a little bit because when you declare um, like your char B, mm -hmm. um, you... I'm saying that it's four wide. Okay. And so four wide I... of whatever the type is. So in this case, the type is care. So if I do B mm -hmm. of four like this, then I'm going to get four characters in a row. I see. And then the rest is indexing. Correct. Okay. So here, this, this line, line 11, is a declaration, but lines 13 through 16 are assignments. So there I'm actually saying like, okay, put J into location B sub zero, put E into location B sub one, and so on. So I see, because this is, this is, okay, that's interesting. So an index of characters mm -hmm. is still, um, is still declared as a character, even though technically it's an index of characters. That's correct, because okay. what is the underlying type of each location in the array? Right, a character. Okay. It's a character. So if I want the type to be an integer, then I would get an array of four integers, which I see. coincidentally works just fine for characters. But you're going to see some crazy results if I actually do that. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, why don't we start with numbers just before, because uh, I'm about to trap you in something terrible. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Enough terrible I'm things prepared. at once. So okay. let's just say like, all right, so we want to create this B thing. <clears throat> well, just to not confuse us, we're going to we're gonna get rid of all this nonsense. And okay, so we're, we're declaring this a, stuff. an array of four integers. That's correct. Got it. Okay, so now... I was just about to sneak up just before we get to that string thing. I want to sneak up on why printf is so cool. So we actually come here and we say like printf. And if I tried to like back to my initial example, if I just say b is like five or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I try to do this, bad stuff happens as we kind of learned before. And that's because b as five would actually cause printf to go, what is ASCII character five? Okay. It's the enquiry command. Okay. <laughs> Which is a control code because it's down in the ASCII set, like the bottom, like 32. Yeah, it's 32. Um, the bottom 32 characters of the ASCII set are all control codes. So okay. if we try to print them out, like say we accidentally print out a number like I just did, it's going to interpret them as whatever those control codes are, which is not actually what we wanted to do. We wanted to see what the number was, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll notice here, if you still have that page up, yep, yep. then you'll see that the actual digits are encoded up above. So they're right mm -hmm. after that control code area. So, well, I mean, there's a bunch of symbols here in the middle. but um, So zero actually starts at 48. So, of course. Because that's Naturally. the code it was assigned. Because if I actually look at zero, that's null. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, which would, which actually has a different meaning. And the new line that I was doing before was is actually code 10. So if I wanted to see a new line, I could just put, I could using just put care, I could say put care 10. And this would actually give me a new line, which it does every time I run it. Um, if I try to see null, bad things might happen. So let's not do that to, the, to our poor program. <laughs> <laughs> but if I wanted to see zero, I would actually have to jump all the way down here to character 48. OK. So I would have to do that. And there I actually get my zero. And if I want my 1, it's 48 plus 1. It turns out it's in the right spot. They weren't crazy. They didn't put the numbers all random places. That's good, at least. <laughs> yeah, ASCII was, they were trying to be sane. <laughs> but, um, An attempt. Yeah, that that's all fine, except the minute that I roll over past that, I'm going to get something 
a little bit different because I'm out of the printable characters. Because keep in mind, ASCII is encoding what letters and numbers they are. It's not the actual number itself, like we might have in an integer. Okay. And that's really just about like how we're going to encode the text for display on output. And it's a rough thing to see the first time you're in C, but that's <laughs> kind of where it starts. You know, you have to say like if all you had was this put care routine, the first thing you would have to do is like take a number and chop it up. Like you would have to like come along here and say like which we're going to get to that, but um, oh, Lord. you would have to say say the the variable number was like one two three four. Actually, that's going to screw us up. So let's just do 7, 9, 2, and 4. OK, then we would actually have to, to print this out, we would have to look 7 up in our chart. <laughs> 7 okay. is here. It's, it's character number 55 in ASCII. And we would have to look 9 up, which is 57. And we would have to look 2 up, and we would have to look 4 up, and we would discover that this is really not fun to do on a table, but it would be 50, and it would be uh, 52. Seems mildly inconvenient. Yeah, and so what we would have to do is we would have to take this number, which is actually just an integer, and we would have to start cutting it. We would have to say, okay, divide out like the, ten, the thousands place, then divide out the hundreds place, divide out the you know, the tens place mm -hmm. and divide out the digit. <laughs> and so, I mean, and, this, yeah. this seems particularly nightmarish to me because I use statements in Python quite a bit when I'm like writing a new function that might be a little bit complicated. I will kind of go piece by piece and put print statements in there just to verify that it's doing what I th I'm telling it to do. And then yes. I'm getting the outputs and like, you know, variable definitions that I, I think that I'm telling it to do. And often I'm I think I'm telling it to do something and I'm not. So yeah. it's a great way to, you know, have that, that verification, but how do you, it's a lot to learn at first. <laughs> I mean, but especially for C, I mean, that kind of, that kind of debugging doesn't seem to be, or that, that ability to just sort of print various um, yeah. values doesn't really, you can't do that. Well, so that's actually what they went and they did for you in stdio.h. Ah, perfect. Thank you. So Someone else that, took care of the problem. <laughs> that's exactly because this gets old fast, <laughs> as you can mm -hmm. see. Um, so, like, if I just want to see like what's in that integer, I'd have to say like, okay, well, take the, take the first, you know, take the ten in my example that I had up above seven nine two four. I would have to say take this thing and chop off the ten, the the thousand digit, and mm -hmm. uh, add that to whatever the value of zero is as a character which is 48 if I wanted to unroll it. And I would have to put that thing on and forget about the conversion issue for a second. And let's just, just to be careful on order of operations, even though plus is lower, we do that and we get our seven. Okay. So that's mildly I mean, again, inconvenient. I can do it this way. And I can run it. <laughs> Wait. Um, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, because the problem is that I didn't get rid of the old number. So, oh, because, yeah, you were just still, all right, yep, that makes sense. Yeah, I divided it there, and then it turns out that that 1,000 is still hanging out. So I would have to do this thing, and I would have to, you know, take this thing, but I'd really have to get rid of the result before of that thing, right? Mm-hmm. And okay. that'll give oh me, gosh. yeah, and this is about as much fun as it looks. <laughs> so, um, so we're not going to do that. We're going to thank the good Yay! authors that um, they actually built this printf function. And what printf does, so even though it doesn't, it's not as magical as Python in that you can just put anything in there and it'll just sort of figure it out. It'll be like, oh, that'll probably look like this if I cast it. And Python's pretty good. Like, you can print a function and it'll give you something. <laughs> you know, it won't crash, but, okay. you know, like I could even print F, print F, except that won't work in C. So, <laughs> so I, we was actually, say, I was like, now I'm lost. <laughs> so C requires two things in order to print things out using print F. And by the way, print F is going to be the general thing we use. Um, you first have this string, which as we saw before, we can put literals in. So like I can just say, Jess is learning C, right? And I remember to put my mm -hmm. new line. I execute this thing. Jess is learning C shows up. 
Okay. Well, I can also specify that there should be a number. I can say like, okay, I want you to treat this as a decimal number, and this percent says that I'm doing a format specifier. Yep. And it works. This, I don't know if you do this in Python using a twist. Yep. Okay, yep, that's yep. actually based on this syntax. So, oh, good. All right, something that'll look familiar. <laughs> yes, it will look familiar. So if I go and I pass this thing in integer, D is the format specifier for integers, and I go and I do that, and then it puts a new line after my number gets interpolated, and yeah, we actually see gotcha. the number. So we don't actually have to cut the thing up and write our own implementation, which is very handy. Say. I could say output is, I can, this works the same as Python, so, you know, if I put a string literal, I can embed it, I can I can put it in the middle somewhere, you know, and it'll just, it, it kind of does normal things. And if I want to get an actual percent to show up, just double it up. Okay. Okay. So that's the way we're going to output things. Now, we can't mix and match types. So mm -hmm. if I have something like, you know, let's say that I have another string here, like, which is just another string and I try to take that another string and output it using a percent %d integer specifier what what's going to happen it's not going to like it because you're specifying it's an integer and then you're feeding it a string yeah the only difference is that c just tries to do whatever you told it to do <laughs> okay. it's not going to say i don't like that it's just going to do some crazy stuff what? <laughs> it's going to say fine you want this thing to be an integer i'll turn it into an integer <laughs> Okay. And well, yeah. not what I expected. No. <laughs> That's probably not what you expected because likely what it did was it said, "Okay, where is this thing stored in memory?" Okay, I'll just print that out because that's a number. <laughs> okay. So, we don't want to do that. So, if you start seeing some crazy output, just check that like, you know, your format specifiers are right. <laughs> so, <laughs> And I can specify that nothing gets output and bad things happen. So I could say, like, a thing. Just like Python, by the way, percent %s for strings. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so I can get a thing. That works the way we think it's going to work. So if I want to assign that to a variable, I can say, you know, before I was using the example of Jess. So we were taking, this would actually work the way it's written right now. Mm -hmm. So this will output Jess. Um, or, you know, let's see, <laughs> programmer is <laughs> Jess. Okay, now um, let's be more Tron-like. <laughs> Same yes. <now>. Okay, <laughs> so um, if we wanted to store that thing, well, the only two types you're going to be working with most of the time are going to be integers and characters, aside from some special things we're going to get to a little later. But um, if I want to actually store that thing in a string, like a string, <laughs> then... I would have to have enough space specified because it's literally these four characters, right? J E S S. Wait, you're joking. You don't have like it's there there isn't like a There is a convenience operator, type? but Okay. Oh uh, no, there is not a string type in C. <laughs> oh my god. Because a string okay. is literally a string, a of, string characters. of characters. <laughs> right? oh, okay. All right. So, if I want to do this, I would, you know, guess from your earlier comment that you said that this was this needs four characters. Mhm. Mm okay. It's a trap, by the way. I'm going to tell you right now. And okay. I'm going to just say, like, okay, let's specify this thing as Jess. And we try to output this. The thing is, C has a convention, which is that how do you know when the string is over in memory? You reach the end of how do you know the where amount the end of spaces is? you gave it. Like, I mean, we gave it four spaces, so it knows after four characters it's ah, done. But C doesn't right? know that. C doesn't seem very smart, quite honestly. No, actually, it doesn't try to be smart at all. <laughs> it's like trying to get a toddler to do something. I'm like, okay, exactly this, and they still find some that, wrong, and you're like... Oh. That is a very good analogy, because <laughs> that is exactly what it's going to do. Because the way it actually stores this thing in memory is it stores it with a null byte at the end. It uses a null byte, which corresponds to the zero that I told you we were going to get to mm -hmm. <laughs> in our ASCII table. Um, that means end of string. Okay. Now, I don't need to specify it because the compiler will do that for me. So anytime it sees a string, which is this double quotes, it automatically inserts that character at the end. Okay. You can imagine how bad that is in the line that I just wrote. Because how many locations did I give it? 
Uh, six. Well, I, in a string. How big is a string? Uh, four. Right. How many characters am I trying to shove in there? Oh, yeah, sorry, six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right now, well, except that this is just a convention. This, this, uh, that just means... So like, I guess one, yeah. Yeah, that, that counts as one character. Just like, this only counts as one character. That's just us telling the compiler, insert this character, which from the ASCII table, you know, just insert this one character, which is just corresponds to digit 10. Okay, so this actually takes one more location than what I've specified. So I would get my first crash if I did this. <laughs> really? Yep, because I specified so that to... this thing mm -hmm. has four memory locations, and I wrote five in there. So it even if you even if you don't add in, because you said the compiler will kind of put that null byte at the end, we uh -huh. have to remember that the compiler is going to do that and give yes. it five? Okay. Yes. <laughs> and if we don't, you get to hold both pieces. <laughs> <laughs> we get a nice oh. little crash. It'll go, no, you're writing into other memory, because literally C doesn't do any thinking, unlike Python. It will just go, oh, well, I'll just try to write into the next piece of memory, which is not yours. <laughs> <laughs> like, it'll just go writing into another process, and then you'll get a security violation. It'll go, ah, <laughs> core dumped, you know, segmentation <laughs> fault, because you wrote past your segment. <laughs> And that's actually the original seg fault. So this is where programmers always kind of start off off by one. Now, the compiler is smart these days, so it does allow this syntax. This is a convenience. So it, you can say, like, you don't specify the size like we're doing right here. Mm -hmm. And it'll go, OK, I'll just allocate enough memory for you. Oh, OK. Which that's is nice. really cool, right? Yeah until I try to do something like this right after it. Right, because it's allocated enough memory for the first thing, and Correct. if you try to change the size, it's going to freak out. Exactly the same problem we gotcha. had before. It's going to write over yep. someone else's memory. <laughs> okay. So this part, this is why allocation is so important, because I, I told you, see, you're going to be handling memory directly. <laughs> <laughs> so this will tell you like this it'll let you do it you know it's just going to try to write into somebody else's memory and probably crash at best at worst it doesn't crash because if it crashes you'll know you have a problem i just have never felt so grateful for python's print function <laughs> this is why i told you so many times in your stream like <laughs> you don't want to manage memory if you don't have to <laughs> Maybe this whole course is really just me trying to convince you not to learn C, but no, no, no. I'm going no, to teach. No, I mean, you. <laughs> it's it's funny though because it like I think some people, and and I mean some people are, are are well meaning with it, but some folks I think who are are very very well versed in C definitely there's kind of a a little bit of like a like a condescending kind yeah. of like well you don't know you know and I'm like well that's fine because you've been hazed by your programming yes. language. And so you just want to feel like it means something, and that's okay. I, but like you're you're getting yeah. hazed, basically. You're getting bullied I, by your programming. Language. I completely agree with you, and that's part <laughs> of why I I generally take the assessment like you don't really know C, do you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I find that the more experienced the C programmer is, the more they like Python. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I swear I would like I would put that on a T-shirt, but I feel like I would get. Things. Yeah. No. I. I it's true, though, because it's like, do you really want to manage this memory? It's like, it's work, you know? So anyway, the the nice thing and the reason we usually do it is because, first of all, I mean, those languages had to be written in something, you know? Like, C mm -hmm. was written as a bare minimum abstraction sort of over the hardware because we didn't want to actually write, like, assembly, you know, because assembly, right. we're really going low level, you know? We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're going like, okay, you know, load into the, you know, let's, let's define a label, you know, that's going to be, well, anyway different class <laughs> so um the point is that it was far worse than this <laughs> and and so this was written so that we could write slightly higher level you know stuff but still know what we're going to get out if we actually look at the machine code you know so it's it's kind of like a minimum abstraction as opposed to something like python which is a really high level ab abstraction mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense okay so it does mean that like you know you'll <laughs> it'll it'll break in interesting ways. It'll haze you in interesting ways. But this particular program is not valid. And I can go ahead and try to run it. And yeah. <laughs> oh okay. Gosh. There's actually a separate problem with this line because I've been doing 
Python all day, but you can't do this. This whole equals a string mm -hmm. is not valid C. What? It's only allowed on the initial assignment, and that was because of convenience, oh. right? So I'm okay. allowed to say like a string is Jess, right? I could, I could do another variable. I could say b string is some guy, and this is fine too, right? But you're kind of trying to like reassign it. Yeah, if I want to take okay. a string and set it to b string, this doesn't do at all what I think it's going to do. <laughs> So aside from the fact that it's going to fail, <laughs> but, because it goes, I mean, the the error that you're going to get, just, just for your reference, which you're going to get as soon as I can link up the error messages to <laughs> the the learning tool, but you're going you're mm -hmm. to see this if you looked at it. Okay. You're not allowed to do this. And the reason you're not allowed to do this is because you're operating on a complex data structure, which is like, C doesn't really know what you want to do here. Like, do you want to copy each of these letters? Do you want to transform them when you're copying? Do you want to just have a reference to it? You know, like C doesn't try to interpret what you're doing. Like Python will go, I'm just going to interpret that as anything that looks reasonable. And if it looks unreasonable, I'm going to fail. C does yeah, not do okay. that. It's going to literally do whatever you tell it to do. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, it's a little bit of a mind shift change. So, all right, yeah. well, we can actually do this. It, it, there is something, there's another convenience routine. So just so that we can kind of like get that started. So here I assigned a string and this will work the way that we wanted the other one to work earlier. So this is a string specifier. This thing is a normal string of characters and that does not what I think it's going to do because I we still, still have, have the a error. string equals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's get rid of that thing. So we run that programmer is Jess, right? Mm -hmm. And if I actually look and I say, show me the value of, like, if I, if I go and I look at the first element of that string, what am I going to see? I want to say it's going to be a J. It's a J, but it's not going to be in J form, right? Is it going to be the number? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be the ASCII value of J. So if I go and I look... You know, it, well, did I do a lowercase or an uppercase? Uh, it's lowercase, so let's let's leave this newfangled world and go to the old-fashioned world where everything had to be uppercase. <laughs> so, so if I go here and I look and I see the J, it's going to show up as 74. I run this thing. Okay, it's actually being kind to us. It's showing us the thing that's Aww. because it's a character, and I didn't say put the number. <laughs> but if I actually cast the thing and I said, okay, I don't want you to treat that as a character. I want you to treat that as a number. So I can cast it. And you do have casting in Python, right? Um, I think so. Okay. Like, what do you mean? Well, see here, it's interpreting this thing as a, as a character. You mean like... We're using put character. <laughs> but, um, Oh, this, this, this right here. I meant this is a this is a cast. I'm, I'm saying take this thing and treat it as this type. So, yeah. Okay. So if I have like let me let me break that apart for a moment. Um, if I if I want to operate on a number, and the way I showed you to do number formatting was to do a D. Mm -hmm. um, so if I want to actually say like show me like this as a number. So in C and let's just make that zero except we're going to set that equal to C is really a string the first character of a string sound good well so I thought okay so so two things first thing I thought that you know you couldn't change typing and so there you're changing from an uh, integer to a character or is it right. just going to kind of do the I I'm going to do exactly what you so how do we say I want you to become an integer? Um, int. We cast it. <laughs> okay. That's exactly what we do. This is a hint to the compiler. I'm saying I'm not willy-nilly turning a character into an integer. I'm telling you to turn a character into an integer. And it just defaults to ASCII. Well, it is actually, it's not default in ASCII. It is in ASCII. <laughs> Because okay. this is ASCII, <laughs> like by oh, standard. Well, yeah. So, like, this actually is not showing up in the computer as JESS. It's actually showing up as those numbers that correspond to JESS. So, 
this is actually just going to show me what is that number and then print it out. Well, it's 74. Okay. So if I want to see, like, the first one, that's the E, right? Mm-hmm. And how would I get the, the next, you know, the S? How would I see that? Um. Yep. And unsurprisingly, if I look at the third one, I'm still going to see the same thing because an S is yep. an S is an <laughs> S, right? And then I told you there was that hidden last character. So if I look at the fourth entry, there's <laughs> my null. That's so cool. All right. So it is there. It's just this is we're using kind of a convenience method to sort of assign it all quickly so that we don't have to go and do a string sub zero is J mm -hmm. and a string sub one is E. <laughs> I mean, that'd, st that'd be pretty arcane with modern <laughs> yeah. technology. So so C does do it, it tries to do some convenience stuff, but it doesn't want to break that like you only get whatever you pay for kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, so um, great. That's enough me programming. Um, <laughs> now I think we need to get you programming a little more. Uh, so, oh, Cam, yes, we are going to get to that, but I want to I want to introduce some uh, looping stuff first. Uh, so now, right here, we've sort of implicitly said like make this thing. I'm, I'm going to just clean up our program a little bit, so we're just down to <laughs> the basics here. So here I'm going to print F and I'm going to change the design. Uh, I like to leave a little space between um, our, see up here we have kind of like our variable declarations and here we're doing some business. And we mm -hmm. try to keep those separate. So if we go and we print this thing out, great. It does what we think. It's going to show us Jess. And if mm -hmm. we do those one at a time, it's going to show them to us. So how can I actually print out those letters. So one, one thing that you probably haven't seen in C, but fortunately your instincts are going to be right because you've seen it in Python, <laughs> mm -hmm. is a for loop. And it works pretty much the same way, but you've also used while loops, right? Yep, yep. Okay. So how can I iterate through every character in this string one at a time? I can do it in Python. I'm okay. not sure... Well, let's do it here. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not sure how would you, how you would in, in C. But. Well, let, let's make this a little bit simpler. Let's say like, okay, I want to see, um, you know, current character. I'll just do current care. Um, we're not going to initialize it because we're we're like that. And we already know that this is how printf works. So I'm just going to comment that out. Okay. So. How do I know when I'm at the end of the string? What is always going to be at the end of a C string, hopefully? You have that, that null byte. Yeah, the null byte. So let's use that as our loop termination. Okay. So let's set the current character to the first entry in the string, which would be what? Uh, are you asking like for an index or are you asking like, do you yeah. want to set it? Hold on. So do you want to do it like this? Or, cause I oh, think, wouldn't no, you no. Let's go... use the actual A string. Yeah. Yep. And we have to terminate our line because it's not Python. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, gonna, like some muscle memory. That's yeah, like... that's some muscle memory. It's, it's, <laughs> you'll see why I have trouble switching over from like Python to C and back all the time. But um, OK, so that's our first character. And then basically we want to kind of like loop through this A string until okay. we hit the null byte. OK. So I can say while and always it's Python, so use it's not Python. <laughs> so always put parentheses around whatever your condition is. Okay. Like in Python, you can just do like while true or whatever. But um, so let's say that this is while current character is, and by the way, the conditionals work exactly the same as what you're used to in Python. So as long as this is not equal to the null byte. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because Python, I would do that, but I, I have to put it in a block. Okay. okay, I want to actually show each character. Mm -hmm. So how do I do that? Uh, we want to see the number for what the character is. You want to see the number for what the character is for all of them? Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, actually, also we can start with just printing the characters out one at a time. Let's start there. Um, what's the what's the in, in, indentation convention? Oh, just four. Yeah, we'll stick with that. Okay. Um. So. <sighs> All right, because my you want them one at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Printf um, would do them all, right? Oh! Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Okay, I would do this so differently. I'm, like, having trouble... Because wouldn't we... Because so you have current character mm -hmm. is is this. But wouldn't instead you want to, like, have um, this be the thing that you're iterating over? Because you're, you're like, continuing to index the string, right? So, yeah, the, we're going to need an index. <laughs> so, so let's give ourselves an index. Right, so like, wouldn't you want to go? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll and get you so, that. yep, and then so you're gonna want to go print. Uh, and then I don't know if this is the way that you write this in strange sea land. Yes, that is totally valid for the uh, increment that you've got here. This is actually a good way to write increments. Um, you can also write it like this. You can write it like this. Um, oh, Lord. Okay. Don't, don't do that. That's, that's <laughs> so, I'll stick with my happy Python, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is fine. But the problem we have here is you're indexing um, current care. And current care is actually just a character. Mm. Yep, so, yep, good call. So we actually need this to be a. Yep. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We could do that. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah. <laughs> I goofed. There we go. And then this instead would be. Oh, so many different things. All right. Yep. Except printf always requires a format specifier. Ah, oh, crap. I'm sorry. I forgot what. No, no, they that's are. totally what fine. Um, percent. Even better. Put care doesn't. So I'm just gonna change your. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, so that's going to write out those characters one at a time, right? Mm hmm Okay. Um, one little logic thing is we've already assigned, in the first time we run through the loop, we've already assigned Kerr care. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, how do you do reassignment then? Oh, how I, do you... No, no, we can reassign. This is all correct. I'm just saying that stylistically, I'd probably put it down here. Is that showing? Oh, up here? I see. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and the, and the idea is just that, like, you know, we've already assigned it up front so that we could build our while loop. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can actually do this. We can say, okay, put out the current character that I've assigned, and increment i, and then take i a string of i to cur care, and then the next time through the loop, we're going to say current care is not equal to null byte, right? Mm -hmm. All right, run it. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 because you wanted, hold on. No, that's it. That's right. You got it. Oh, okay. you got I didn't just. know if you want them on a separate line, so I was like, oh, no, do I have to add that, like... Oh, yeah, you could thing? totally do that. Yeah, go ahead. Give me the new line. Oh, God, I don't... I don't that doesn't work with... Does this work with put... put well, we care? don't want to put it... Put care only does one character at a time. So if I want to put out the new line, it, which it will work with it... Okay, so then... Uh, I really don't. It's, I know. I know that it's like this, but I just don't know. This is like a variable. So, do you? Uh, which, which? Which? What? I don't think that updated. So, can you? Can you? I, I think we're desynced. Can you hit uh, reload? Oh, yep. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. Now where was I? Okay. No. 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 You're fine. So, um, current care is a variable name, mm -hmm. and so I can't just like add like backslash n on there so right i can't concatenate right so i mean python would allow you to do that but <laughs> i have to be explicit and see and even if i did stick it on i would end up needing memory for it because where is it going to put mm -hmm. that in memory because it's going to be another character right that's another character so why don't we just go simple for now and just do it on a separate call put care twice Yeah, we'll just call it for one character at a time. Yep. Yeah. Like and because 
We yeah. want to sort of leave our loop business separate. <laughs> I'll just add a new line. But, yeah, look at that output. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. It does exactly what you think. And if I wanted to put, like, a little, you know, greater than, like I have in the output, because <laughs> someone had to write this thing, <laughs> I could do it this way. And if I wanted a space there, I could do that. Right? Mm-hmm. All right, and so I can execute that, and that's all fine. So that first line has the one that comes from the program, and then the, the other stuff, you know, gets that format. Yeah. Now, obviously, that's easier if I do it with a printf. So let's just say we're using printf to go a character at a time, which mm -hmm. the specifier is C. Um, unlike Python just treats everything as a string, <laughs> but... <laughs> But C doesn't, right? It differentiates between a character and a string of characters. So mm -hmm. I can do this C thing, which means I'm going to provide a character. And then I'm going to provide a character because they have to match. And if I wanted to get this output like I just did, I could put that right there as a literal, right? Mm -hmm. OK, so now you also had your new line, okay. which I can stick in the string. So I can I can run that. And we get the same output. Cool. That makes sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, then while is a little bit weird here, because we're usually you use a while loop when you don't have an iterator, like in this yeah. case, i. So mm -hmm. this would naturally be done, but it, it helps us focus on the logic. So nice job with that, by the way. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, normally it would be a for loop, right? Yeah, we can use a for loop. But the catch is that in C, see, like in Python, we have this nice, like, for in syntax. Yes. Happy you know, place. Yeah, it's a happy yeah. place. <laughs> there we go. I was like, oh, I recognize. We don't get for in in C. <laughs> okay. Of course we don't. In implies that we know something about the data structure, which we don't in this case. Like, we know it's a string because we said so. But C at every line just goes, all right, I got characters. You want me to work on a character? Is that a string? That's up to you. It may or may mm -hmm. not be terminated by a null character. <laughs> so um, in order to be able to loop through the thing, and we're going to keep the same logic, but we're going to convert this to a, a for loop. So okay. for loop, we're only allowed one type of for loop in C. And that's the three argument for loop. So it always looks like this. And this is our terminating condition. This current care is not equal to null byte. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're going to pick that up and we're going to move it exactly there. The first okay. part is whatever your setup is. So in this case, I want i to be 0. Mm -hmm. And the last part is whatever I want you to do on every iteration through the loop. So this so is where we usually do. Yeah. yeah. We could we could use i plus equals 1 if you're comfortable with that. This is where mm -hmm. you'll see um, increment syntax most often. OK. Um, but you know we can actually just, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with your, we can, we can unroll your thing and really write it out. Oh, Lord. OK. OK, so um, this is a valid for loop. But now we have to modify the rest of this loop. So what do we need yeah. to do here? OK, so let's think about this. So well, first get rid of the while, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what is it doing? So right now, what it's doing is it's printing this, which would be this. And then we don't need this, I'm guessing, because I think that's probably what this is doing is you're kind of telling it how to iterate up here. Um, and so, also, is it just convention for this to have the spaces after your very? Uh, you cut out there at the end. Is it convention to oh. have what? Uh, the spaces after the various conditions for your. Spaces after the various conditions. Um, so you see how like here. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's convention. OK, yeah, uh, just curious. C, um, C totally allows this, by the way. Ew, I don't like that. No, no. I, I don't like it either. I don't feel like it's very readable, but yeah, some, no. some like, people do this, the line. which I don't like that either. That's That would probably be my inclination just from... I don't like it because this to me is like I've terminated this statement sort of like up here. Okay, I see what you're saying. See, so like, having the space kind of differentiate. Yeah, like this to me says like, okay, this is part one, part two, part three. Okay. That makes sense. All right, so let's see then for I. All right, so we're starting there. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine. Go to iterate. Okay. 
And I'm just writing mm -hmm. up four on the whiteboard for you. Would would this work? Uh, well, one way to find out, right? Right. Well, I'll run it. <laughs> uh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm seeing output. This, I'm seeing output, but I think I know you said this needs to be at the bottom, but I think for this, for the for loop, I think it needs to be here, because now when we do it, uh -huh. yeah, now I get one J. Yeah, and you got something else there at the bottom. Oh, I got the yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> you no. got the null byte. <laughs> so I guess we got I to never... find out what what happens when we put the null byte out because I wasn't really sure. <laughs> so, eh, there's so theory. It... <laughs> so wouldn't it wouldn't it terminate though when the the current care equals the null byte, or is it because I see because uh... it's getting assigned? Yeah. So our wanna... issue here is that we're, mm. you know, we're we're going through until we see the null byte, mm -hmm. but we're already running one more time through the loop because i is already like the next value, right? So I I can I can do this is why in C we usually do like this notation. Um, could I do this? So could I go? Um... Okay, hold on. Give me a second, Jess. Sure. Right. So if we do that, no, I still get it. Hold on. Well, okay, did you I want to be one four, too many? Right. Four. There we go. Yep. Yeah. C program. You're always off by one. <laughs> oh, Lordy. All right. Um, I was like, wait, did I add one? And then no, I take one. anyway. Um, so would that be a better way then to have that terminating condition so that it's like really explicit? Uh, yeah. The only problem is that now that I'm specifying that it's four, what happens if I change my program to? Um, you just never change your programs ever. In <laughs> okay, well, that is actually what most C programmers do. Like, I don't <laughs> want to change the program. It works. <laughs> so, don't touch it. Okay, yeah, if I run this, then I'm not going to see my whole string. So that was the reason we were using the null byte. I see. Okay. But it wasn't so... Okay, ah. so hold on. I got an idea. I got an idea. Yeah. Then let's do... Um, hold on. Yeah, we can add one. Sure. So it's always checking the next. Yeah, I like it. Right? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what did I screw up here? Hold on. So I equals zero. Can't be this. Um, I'm going to refresh to get clear the output window. Yeah, I'm going to actually do the same thing. I'm going to add a button for that. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're fine. I was just having trouble. I'm going to rerun it because I'm having trouble seeing. Okay. There we go. That makes a lot more yep. Did it just print out EN? Okay. So that means yeah. um, that should actually be enough then, I believe. Okay. So because a string not... of I is not equal to this null byte. Mm -hmm, because we're so. Pre-increment I. So mm -hmm. it's going to do that each successive time. Yes. Okay. So we so go and run we, that. Yeah, because it. I think the issue, as as how I'm understanding it, is that when we have the the terminating condition include current care, the problem is that we're not like reassigning current care until it's actually started the loop, mm -hmm. and so we need to we need to have the check being like kind of outside of that assignment. Yeah. I guess. So. Yay! <laughs> there we go. Bullseye. Right? Okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. So Woo! this is good. Um, now, if we screw ourselves up and we use the post increment, it should be exactly the same, right? Um, post increment. Uh, I looked down to write something down. What did you change? Um, I took, here we had this. Okay, so we okay. had pre-increment I. And if I change that to post increment I, which means like do the increment at the end of the loop. That's what that means. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So hold on. So then if we're changing the I, um, if it's changing it at the end of the loop, I don't think that will work. Will it? Oh, God. Run it. Mm -hmm. No. 
all right. <laughs> but I think that way your your changing of the eye might be a way to keep the current care, maybe. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, this, I'm just going to warn you right now, this will get you into trouble. You're okay in this program. Um, but what will get me into trouble? I'm sorry. The, uh, the, the post. post oh, sorry. There I go. Selecting the text. Again. Yeah, no, I forgot. to <laughs> look over. Uh, no, no, it's my bad. Um, I'm going to add selection. Don't worry. Uh, so using post increment will often lead to like kind of off by one errors. It's a lot easier to reason about this thing if you use a pre increment, but, um, it's basically where C is setting the, the value, whether it does it at the top of the loop or the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's just, or I'd say like either just use this or all, or this is fine. You know, like if you want to use your plus equals one or spell it all out and say, you know, like that. Um, those are clear. Okay. It's, it's clear what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty portable across all different C implementations. Pre-increment, post-increment, they're a little bit funny. <laughs> so okay. um, I'm going to just punt on that for now. We're not going to get too far, but like, you know, so we can we can use this plus equals if you're used to that in Python. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we run that. We I, really like, program. I really like the, the four string setup with the three, the three mm -hmm. conditions, because that's actually, that's really, really nice. Because one of the things that I've run into in Python is certain situations where you almost, you want like a for loop, but really you want that ability to have like a more complicated. Yeah while loop condition to terminate. It, it, it's funny you... that you say that because Python explicitly doesn't want you to write this ever. <laughs> this is the first <laughs> thing I like about C. <laughs> they, they were trying to get away from this for exactly the reason that we did the first time we ran this loop. It's very easy to read into the wrong memory space. It's very mm. easy to be off by one. It's very easy to write into memory that's not yours. And okay. you can count on the operating system catching it and crashing for you. Or in older operating systems that didn't have protected memory, like they didn't catch it. You know, you just ended up screwing someone else's program up. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Because Python is definitely, I think, more handholdy in that way. Well, but, um... they were trying to cut down, like language-wise, how do you cut down off by one errors? Don't give the programmer a counter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, which okay. is why, like, the default for in Python is kind of like, you know, for, like, uh, x in range, range 5. And that means you're going to get 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Don't don't ask what they are because they're going to be 0 through 4. But, <laughs> you know, like, you're only mm -hmm. going to get 5 entries. Okay. Um, so that was them trying to, like, prevent you. And then if you really needed to see which loop you were on, they added this enumerate later so that you could say, like, okay, like... Oh, know, yeah. Like, I mean, so that way you're not doing the math and you're not doing the iteration stuff. They're trying to pull that out of the language. But C gives it to you. <laughs> and and when your program breaks, you know, just be careful. <laughs> it's one of those things about C. <laughs> oh, okay. Geez. So that's all making sense so far? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep, all yep. right. So we've got our basic four, we've got our basic while. Math works pretty, I'm, I'm punting on math, but math works basically the same way that you think. Like, you know, if I want I to be, you know, uh, 10 times 47, it'll do that. I can divide, I can multiply. I can't do this. This is not portable C. So I can't say 10 to the 47th. Okay, how would you do exponents? Uh, well, you need the math library. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> because nothing's free. <laughs> so, I'm learning that. <laughs> so there is a function in there which is called pow, which um, should be in section pow. three of the manual. Uh, I kind of like that, pow. Yeah, pow is what we think. And I'm just pulling up on stream here, but you can see that like pow, and again, you'll notice everything is defined. Right, so I have a return type, I have the name of the function, and I have whatever parameters it takes. And pow does power. <laughs> so, okay. you know, if I want how, 10 to yes, the 47. Okay, there are floats. I was going to ask. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, cool. floating point math was like invented around the time of C. <laughs> like, well, later. Well, you know what? I didn't know if this, I was about to say, this is like the. Yeah, no, there, there are, that yet. there definitely are floats, so we can we can have our constants like pi and I don't know. You want to give me a few digits? 
How's your pie? Um, oh God, three point one four. I, I was just on it. That's, that's my pie. I was on a so. tear today about like Tao and the politics of pie. So I'm not going to get back into that. <laughs> oh, we're, we're just going to go with our, our 3.14. So um, by the way, that is defined in here. There is, there, there are constants for, for that available, but they're not, they're, they're in hard to find places. Um, so this, and they're not portable. <laughs> they're not part of the standard. Okay. C includes nothing in the standard that doesn't absolutely have to be there. Like the whole design of the language is like super, super minimal. So everything that you want to do like that would be reasonable, like you want to print out numbers and turn them into strings, those are added in. Like in STDIO or, you know, math operations mm -hmm. that are complicated, they're going to be in the math like lib. Or, and, you know, if you want different math, like if you want the fastest Fourier transform in the West... <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so we're okay, gonna get to the, really happy we're gonna get to the fastest Fourier transform in the west later but um so i can have a float here and the only real thing that i have to watch out now here we were sort of like writing out like piece at a time um mm -hmm. so i'm just going to comment all that out so we'll leave it there and let's say we wanted to just specify like i want to see some float. so if i wanted tau is I use this for my format specifier for float. And I think that's the same in Python. And oh, there we go. Yep. Even though floats are actually doubles in Python. Which can't be D because that'd be an integer. Okay. So how do I get a double? Well, we'll get F. to that in a moment. But um, yeah, I can cast it. So I can do this okay. and I can say like, all right, give me pi. Mm-hmm. Except I don't want pi, I want tau, so I can do math and I can say, give me two times pi, and we'll just throw some extra parentheses in there so that order of operations are clear. And I get a nice error because it's, oh, right, I left this illegal line in here, this <laughs> showing that you, that you can't do that <laughs> for powers. Um, all right, and I get oh, tau. Yeah. Okay which is cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you do have the pow function that we just briefly touched on. So like, and it returns a double, but you can cast a double to a float. You'll just lose some precision. So I can say like, if I want 10 to the 47, I can do that. And, you know, I'll get a nice big number. Um, if I actually want to output that, because, you know, pow actually returns a double, and a double is double the size of a float. Well, one way I could do it is I could actually just change the type on pi to a double. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on, hold on. So we did, we did, is that, that's 10 to the power of 47? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like Python gives you that syntax right. like that. So why is it not one with 47 zeros after it? Ah, floating point math. Okay, I haven't done a lot of that. So I was like, <laughs> so, so I, don't, I don't even see floating point in precision. I'm like, yeah, it's... It's right there. It's, it's, because it's like, uh, IEEE 754, you know, sucks. <laughs> I mean, it's like it, it doesn't, it intentionally doesn't have like, you know, decimal type math. Like if you wanted a precise answer, you'd have to use like a big decimal library. Okay. Like floats are literally floats. Like, I mean, it, it you know, floats typically implemented as like, you know, 32 bits, so the same size as an integer in its original implementation. Mm -hmm. um, or you could be Intel about it and go 80 bits, and, you know, have fun with the extra bits in your register when you change them. <laughs> but um, if you want a little more precision, you can bump it up to double. Um, the downside is that here I'm, I'm turning it back into a float when I'm outputting it, mm -hmm. like back on line 20. Yeah. So if I want to see that as an actual double, and if I want to tell printf, no, it's not a float, I want the whole double, then that's a long float. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's like use the float formatting, but make it really big is kind of what the <laughs> L is for. Um, and yeah, I still get, you know, this was actually giving me double before. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Um, that is my double type, but you know, you you actually can, you know, in it. Well, this is kind of a fun example, <laughs> but um, we can actually before we uh, touch on that real quick, there is one more type that we're probably going to be playing with, which is actually what that comes from, which is a long. Okay. And a long is really now in the original standards, 
these things were a little bit nonspecific, and that led to trouble for C programmers through the ages. So, <laughs> like, in the original standards, like, because the problem is, like, different machines had different sizes, you know, so, like, how how big was, like, you know, a character? Mm -hmm. Well, in modern C, it's 8 bits. So that gives you 256 values, and that's exactly the ASCII space. So when I was looking at ASCII before, like, you know, I've got there's this is seven bit ASCII. The upper, the upper um, 128 entries are were reserved for, well, other stuff. <laughs> you know, ASCII's like we only need seven bits to encode this stuff, so it's a seven bit encoding. But everybody tried to stomp on the top 128 <laughs> places. But that's sorry, getting a little bit esoteric. Um, <laughs> so they they said, well, you could have a seven bit character, you know, and most of the standards said, no, that's crazy. Like, we want powers of two, so let's go with eight bits. So character is eight bits, um, and it still is. So I can have something like, you know, care X is B or something. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I had a delay, so I was like, where am I looking? But no, okay, go ahead. <laughs> nice cam, by the way. Nice to have that microcontroller. Um, so this care X is like, you know, kind of a fun oh did i lose oh yeah sure um yeah th this th this care acts basically like that's that's your just normal like 8-bit value um int was a long was defined as a four byte value so like you know in the case of like long j4 um this was kind of like you know this would be a nice long number there was a short which was which is not used that often anymore and it was defined as sort of half the size of a long. <laughs> okay. So I can I can do that. Down in these numbers, they're all sort of the same size. But um, these days, this is typically 16 bits. This is typically um, 32 bits, four bytes. Um, so a long is four times the size of a character. Some platforms, like if you're on a 64-bit platform, long would be 64 bits, that led to a whole bunch of standardization problems. Because if you were running on an 8-bit platform, or if you were running on a 64-bit you know, platform, those were different sizes. So you had to know where your program was running. OK. But yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like a, you know, it's a reference. And so it depends yeah. on what it's reference. Yeah. And int was defined as somewhere in between a long and a short. You know, so somewhere in between. Yeah, it was. It was just the literal standard said any convenient value for an integer. <laughs> so int was horribly non-standard. Like, so you're gonna see all sorts of like obfuscated C syntax because sometimes you care what the size is, and pretty much every other time you're gonna have some sort of portability issue between platforms. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you better care. Like, so nowadays you'll see stuff like you know the new types, which which yeah, will say like, okay. and, and that's literally saying like, I want this thing to be a number, but it's only eight bits. Or I want this thing to be a number, but it's 16 bits. Or I want mm -hmm. this thing to be a number, but it's 32 bits. And that's kind of nice because it's explicit. So standards usually use these types, but the old C would use these types, and they would change on different platforms. So if you're looking at like really old code, like for example, say you like PNG images, right? <laughs> okay. And you wanted to open up the code for libpng, which is C, by the way. <laughs> All right. You might notice that in the code is a whole bunch of defensive checks about we don't know if we're running on a machine with 12 bits as a byte or 8 bits as a byte, or 24 bits as a byte. So all of the code is still in there <laughs> to handle those that's different really bits. really interesting. Yes, yeah, so that's why, like, later on, they said this is just sort of nonsense. So, like, if we really want to declare memory and say, like, this thing is 16 bits, then just say it's 16 bits. <laughs> and leave it up to the platform to define this to be the right underlying type. So, like, GCC does this for you. These are, like, the GCC extensions. Uh, but, you know, this case, like, a uint16t is actually going to turn into a short, because it's actually, on this platform, it's 16 bits. That's really interesting, though. Okay. Huh. Well, and that's also where we're going to kind of wrap up. <laughs> so, um, is that making sense? I mean, types are this, I think the hardest thing 
for somebody coming from Python to start to recognize is that this stuff doesn't happen for you automatically. Like, this is literally something that you have to spell out, like, this is the memory it's going to be. This is how much location size I'm going to have. This is where this thing's going to go. And everything has to be sort of spelled out. There are some convenience routines, like we ended up using here with a string. You know, so we mm -hmm. didn't actually have to specify the, the null byte at the end. And yeah. let me tell you right now, most security exploits are related to this. To, <laughs> to C the, code where people didn't with get like the... convenience? Yeah. Well, not, not the convenience routines. They're usually safe. But later on, they're operating on this string, and they're doing something like, okay, I'm going to have a buffer here, and it's 256 bytes. Okay, and then I'm going to put some stuff in the first characters, and then I'm going to forget that the null byte counts as a character, and then... Boom. Buffer overflow. Huh. That's really interesting. I mean, I could I could totally see. I mean, maybe people who've been doing this for, for years and years and years, that kind of is an intuition, but I can definitely see myself forgetting that for sure, especially coming from Python. Um, just t looking at the chat real fast, they're, they're pointing out that um, <clears throat> I'm cheating a little bit because I'm not talking about the signed versus unsigned types. All of these things that are up here that I just wrote out, these are all signed types. So they all have a sign. So I can have, okay. you know, negative numbers here. I can, you know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. If I actually want the, there's unsigned versions of all of them. So I can have an unsigned, you know, that's actually an unsigned int, but um, unsigned counts as an int. And that would be, this would be a fun line. The compiler would probably say, well, I'll do it, but. <laughs> this thing is going to not be what you expect. So I'm trying to avoid a little bit of complexity there, uh, chat. So we'll, we'll we'll get more into sign bits next time. But you are right, um, Wooger. <laughs> <laughs> the joy of Wooger. screaming is trying to <laughs> pronounce people's names. Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, Wooger is absolutely right. <laughs> but, Wooger. Um, yeah, so like the actual literal, um, I, I should be correct because you're learning this kind of for the first time. So um, yeah, the equivalent, like if I wanted a short, well, I mean, this particular int would be a uint um, if I had it as unsigned, unsigned. This this would show up as a uint32, um, typically, uh, modern standards. So like this, these two would be equivalent. Okay. The unsigned version of that would be like that. Or sorry, that's the signed version of it. So both of these allow negative numbers, and that's kind of what's going on. So a little bit of flair, but I do want to point out that Wigur is correct. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all made sense? You ready to do yeah. some library authoring and compiler work? Build Python can, from scratch? <laughs> I can put... Put care. Yeah, there put care is a good place need, to start. Put if care. You need characters put, put. I can. I can put the characters for you. All right. <laughs> good. Um, we're gonna be doing a little bit more with. Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna get down and dirty with strings and um, some I/O processing next time because we got to kind of get you to the point where you can sort of see what's happening as you're transforming mm -hmm. things. Um, and then after that, well, we have a whole bunch of stuff on the horizon. Yes. I'm so excited. This is this is really fascinating, and I mean, it is. It, it's that kind of, com it's how to put it. It's the, um, the fact that it, it, it's making you be so explicit that yeah. I feel like is going to make me a better programmer. It will I'm going to just like <laughs> be a lot more, you know, I, I feel like, so honestly, I feel like Python is, is the perfect thing for an astronomer because we're all about just like order yep. of magnitude estimations. And so it's like, yep. you know, it's fine. Everything's a sphere and we can just ignore. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. You it's know, mostly I'm spherical. An order of magnitude. <laughs> close enough and yeah, so exactly. i feel like it's very like pythonic in a way and yep. it's going to make me a better a better programmer just like maybe being more explicit in some ways might make you a more accurate no uh, totally so. i mean it, and you're absolutely right it, c is fairly unforgiving um it and that's mainly because it's really just a thin abstraction on top of the metal like the underlying computer program is pretty close to what you're writing especially if you turn all the optimizations off. <laughs> like if you if you look at the assembly output, like it'll comprehensively translate into these statements. <laughs> huh. we'll, we'll do that at one point in the future, but yes. it will, okay. it will really make cool. you better because it will show you literally like what the computer's doing. So it does force you though, on the flip side, because it doesn't really do anything for you, there's no magic, 
it forces you to really be explicit and to think about like all those different things. So like mm -hmm. one of the things like maybe with C, you probably, I mean, who knows what you're going to use, you know, in your life, but it is one of those things like it will make you better in any other language because you'll kind of know what the computer is really doing. And you'll also, even in Python, if you never use C, you'll just be like, I'm really glad I'm writing Python <laughs> and, and I'm not dealing with any of that stuff. <laughs> I have a Python project that I'm working on right now that I was gone after this. And I'm like, I am so appreciative. Like every line of, oh, totally. I'm so glad it's Python. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming to the show and thank you everybody for showing up and Wooger for finding my signed uh, issues. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> And yeah, like I said, the tool is evolving. So, you know, as soon as I get like, you know, some error output and some more stability and the thing like isn't a hot mess like it is right now, <laughs> um, I will get that open source. So it will be available for anybody who wants to use it for, you know, learning sessions. Um, and Jess, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I mean, this is amazing. And I, I really appreciate your because it's very, oh. very interesting and I'm excited to learn more. I think I just lost part of that, but sounds like you're excited <laughs> i'm excited yep okay. that's, that's pretty <laughs> yeah, much the gist of it that's, yay that's, that's basically what i meant all right are you uh are you gonna be streaming now should we come raid you yeah i'll need like uh like maybe five minutes ten minutes ago. but um i'm gonna be not not coding in c I'll, i'm gonna be working on python but <laughs> okay. um yeah um i don't i don't know if i can well yeah i guess i can't um, i'm like a noob with twitch so <laughs> <laughs> Me too, uh, don't worry. Why don't, we, why don't we just put a link to your channel in the, uh, <laughs> you, uh, can you type in the stream? Yeah. Um, so all of you who don't know, um, Jess is a astrophysicist and she does all sorts of interesting things with um, the sky. <laughs> so, Basically, yeah. My terrible description. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's like, see, yeah, you do this thing with the computer, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but That's anyway, nice it's in chat, so check it out, um, and she'll be on in a little bit. Thank you. All right, great. Well, have fun, everybody, and thank you, Jess. Of course. Bye, guys. Bye.